This is KGW News at Noon. We, the jury, unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. That ruling came down a few hours ago in the murder trial of former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger. She shot and killed her neighbor, Botham Jean, a year ago. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brenda Braxton. Jean's family attorney told reporters he hopes today's verdict will set a precedent to keep other officers accountable. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has the latest from the courthouse. The unanimous verdict came after about six hours of deliberations. The jury of eight women and four men convicting Amber Geiger, the former Dallas police officer, of murder. Geiger had said that she had mistaken 26-year-old Botham Jean for a burglar inside her own apartment. It turns out she was, in fact, in his apartment after a long shift at work. Prosecutors had argued that she had missed crucial signs suggesting that she was on the wrong floor and that she may have been distracted after exchanging sexually explicit text messages with a police partner earlier that night. The shooting happened in September of last year. And now the question is, how much time will Amber Geiger be sentenced to? We are awaiting the sentencing phase of this trial set to begin this afternoon. She faces up to 99 years in prison. Again, after a unanimous verdict, Amber Geiger guilty of murder. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, Dallas. The community is paying tribute to a Cowlitz County firefighter who died by suicide earlier this month. Michael Zanefeld was a battalion chief and had been with the department for 25 years. We want to give you a live look this afternoon at that procession from Kelso to Longview. You see it's moving toward our camera. You see the flashing lights there in the distance. This started about 30 minutes ago at the fire station on Vine Street. It will end at New Life Fellowship Church on 42nd Avenue. Zane Feld's family released a statement. It says in part, he was loved by many and respected by all. This tragedy does not define Michael's commitment to his family, peers, and community. Instead, we ask for this tragedy to redefine how mental health in first responders is looked at. The funeral will start today at 1 o'clock. We'll be streaming it at KGW.com and on our Facebook and YouTube pages. And we will have much more coverage coming up on KGW News at 4 o'clock. If you or somebody you know needs help or if you just need somebody to talk to, the Suicide Prevention Hotline is available 24-7. That number is now on your screen. It's 1-800-273-8255. A coaching legend in Oregon has been found guilty of doping violations. Alberto Salazar is banned from the sport for the next four years. He coaches for Nike and says he'll appeal. Yesterday, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency announced Salazar's punishment for trafficking testosterone, among other things. He coached some great runners, including Olympic silver medalist Galen Rupp, who graduated from Central Catholic High School. Now he faces doping accusations as well. Under one of Galen's, it had uh, currently on testosterone and prednisone med medication. Testosterone is obviously banned. Rupp denied the allegations and has never failed a drug test. Salazar was, has also denied wrongdoing. In a statement, he said he was shocked by the outcome, writing, the Oregon Project has never and will never permit doping. I will appeal and look forward to this unfair and protracted proce process, rather, reaching the conclusion I know to be true. Well, starting today, if you want a plastic straw at a Portland restaurant, you'll have to ask for it. The new policy prohibits businesses from handing out any single-use plastics unless a customer specifically requests them. Besides the straws, this includes things like utensils and condiment packets. The policy applies whether you dine in, drive through, or get your order to go. The city hopes this reduces plastics use overall.
Let's step outside for a second, courtesy of our Wells Fargo Skycam. On this first day of October, looking good. Look at all that blue sky. Chris McGinnis is in for Rod today, and we're seeing sunshine, but boy, was it chilly this morning. Is there even a cloud out there right now? <laughs> Barely. Gorgeous. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. Yeah, and we need it after a cold start even colder than yesterday. 37, the unofficial low temperature at PDX this morning, which replaces yesterday as the coldest temperature of the fall thus far, right? Uh, the coldest temperature actually since the end of March. So it's been a while since we've been this cool. Hillsboro got down to the freezing mark. So did McMinnville. Scappoo's close at 33. Chehalis got down to 32. And even Astoria along the North Oregon coast got down to 35 degrees. Newport hit 37. The cold spot on this map, uh, the coldest spot that we can find in the state this morning, K Falls checking in with 25 for a morning low. So unseasonably cold weather across the Pacific Northwest continues today and despite the bright sunshine out there, we're still struggling into the 50s right now. It's 54 last check at PDX. Mind you, our normal high this time of the year is about 71. We're not going to get there today, but the sun will feel pretty nice. Future cast says temperatures climbing into the lower to middle 60s later today. So plenty of sun with about 61, 62 degrees at 6 o'clock. Sunset this evening just before 7. We'll have another cool night tonight, but not as cold. And then it looks like we've got some subtle changes coming our way tomorrow. Some clouds and a shower threat eventually Wednesday evening. More on that with your full forecast in just a bit. Brenda. We will see you then. Thanks, Chris. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is pushing back against the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. On Twitter this morning, he accused House Democrats of trying to bully and intimidate five State Department officials who've been asked for interviews as part of the Ukraine investigation. Yesterday, the State Department confirmed that Pompeo was on the call between President Trump and Ukraine's president back in July. Meanwhile, Congress has subpoenaed documents from the president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, about efforts to dig up dirt on Joe Biden. Giuliani says he hasn't decided whether to comply with that subpoena or whether he'll testify. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm weighing the alternatives. I'm I'll kind of like go through it. I'll get all my evidence together. I'll get my charts. I don't know if they let me uh, use videotapes and tape recordings that I have. The House has demanded that Giuliani turn over the documents by October 15th. Here are some of the other headlines around the nation and around the world. One year from today, the TSA will start enforcing its Real ID policy at airports. Real ID compliant driver's licenses meet the higher security standards. They have a star in the upper portion of the card. If you don't have a real ID, you can use your passport to fly, but you won't be able to get on a plane with just a standard license. A Hong Kong police officer shot a protester in the chest during an anti-government demonstration. Officials say the 18-year-old is in the hospital now in serious condition. A police spokesman said the officer feared for his life and described the protesters as rioters. Today's demonstration comes as the Communist Party in China marks its 70th anniversary. And security video caught the moment a bridge collapsed into a harbor in northeastern Taiwan. An oil tanker was crossing that bridge when it collapsed, crushing several fishing boats. Two people died, dozens more are hurt. No word yet what caused that disaster. And that is a quick look at your Tuesday headlines. Back here at home, a man from the Clackamas area is missing off the Oregon coast. He's an amateur sailor who worked as a counselor at Franklin High School. Huang Tran left Newport on Saturday for just a quick day trip, sailing solo. Thunderstorms moved in and Tran never returned to shore. Yesterday, somebody spotted some of his belongings near Whale Cove, about 11 miles north of where he set sail. But so far, there's no sign of him or his boat, and the Coast Guard has called off the official search.